Good morning, everyone. My name is Marco Lopresti, and I'm working for Arte Generali, supporting both the financial department and the commercial and business development department uh, of Arte Generali in Italy. During today's class, we are going to focus on the fine art insurance policy, covering what is a fine art insurance policy, first of all, and why is important? Why is important to protect both the conservation status of our cultural heritage, but also the financial value of the artworks, as we would do for every other asset class. Okay, so first of all, let's see who we are covering with our fine art insurance policy. Mainly two types of clients, two types of customers, private customers on one side and institutional customers on the other side. So with private customers, what do we mean? We mean art collectors mainly, either high net worth individuals or ultra high net worth individuals. Uh, with uh, institutional customers instead, we mean museums, corporate art collection, galleries, archives and libraries. Here you can see how our products are built. So you see that uh, they are built in different modules. Of course, in both private and institutional, we have art and collectibles. So what are we covering and how? Art and collectibles, of course, the art collection, either of private customers or an institutional, is always part of our uh, insurance coverage. And then we, add, we have other different modules. Let's start from the, the private side. Uh, if we think about uh, an house of an art collectors, we offer the possibility to cover everything uh, that is part of the collection, but also that is inside and part of the house. So we have the content, and with content we mean valuable content. Most of the time, art collectors uh, own also design pieces. You can imagine a sofa, a lamp that is a, can be of a particular value. Uh, then jewelry, of course. The building itself, so the, the apartment, the house, the villa, the value uh, of, uh, of the apartment of the villa, third party liability, cut nut, that means natural catastrophes, so we cover everything also in case of earthquakes, flood, this coverage is a add-on, let's say, to the normal policy and it can be, uh, it can be applied or not, of course. Uh, the only compulsory modules here both for private and institutional customers, is the art and collectibles. All the other modules uh, are optional, as you can see. And then we have assistance for, for private customers, 24 hours assistance. In the institutional side, instead, you can see that the, the structure is basically the same. You, you, can, you can find all the different modules uh, we have already found in the private side. The only difference, the main difference, is the, about restoration cost. And with restoration cost, what do we cover? In some apartment, in some important villas, you can find uh, valuable wall decorations, for instance. You can imagine uh, a 16th century villa in Tuscany uh, with a huge fresco on the ceiling. How do you cover that? It's not part, of course, of the art collection. It's part of the building, but the building coverage is not enough to cover uh, that valuable decoration. So we have a module that is dedicated to this kind of situation. So underwrite a fine art insurance policy means to transfer the risk. Transferring the risk from the owner of the artwork to the insurance company. And this moment is really important because the correct identification and the assessment of the risk is a crucial moment in the underwriting of the, of the policy. It is really important in order to understand the real need, uh, the real need of, the, of the client uh, and understand also the, the effective extent of the risk that the company, the insurance company is about to take. For this reason, also for the client, it is really important to give complete and truthful information to the insurer. It is so important for the client also because uh, if he gives false declaration, uh, this can lead to the reduction of the sum due in case of claim or even to the cancellation of the policy. The, the FNARC insurance policy 
is the official document where the financial risk is transferred from the client to the insurer. As we were saying before, the, the first step in order to under, underwrite a policy is to correctly identify the risk. On one side, and on the left side, on, on the client side, uh, it is an important moment to make the state of art of the collection in terms of list of artworks, valuation of the artworks, and condition report. But also, it's important to invest in risk assessment, prevention measures, and emergency plan for the collection. So it's time to, you know, put in order uh, the list of artworks you have and understand the real need of your collection. On the insurance company side, instead, it's important to collect all the information we can. So we need to actively visit the risk with both an art expert and an insurance technician that will help to collect all this information that we, we listed before. Just after visiting the risk and having assessed all the information, both technical information about security standard of the environment and information about the art collection. So if the artworks are are original and uh, what kind of collection it is, what is the, the real condition of the artworks, then the insurance company decide to underwrite and quote the risk or not. If we start by reading the FNARC insurance policy, the first chapter is often dedicated to the definitions. So we are going to define who are the parties involved in this contract. We find, first of all, the contractor, so that is the one who is paying the premium for the insurance, then the insured. The policy is always taken out in the name and on behalf of the insured, and who is the one whose interest is protected by the insurance at the end. Then we have the beneficiary. It is the person entitled to the compensation in case of claim of in case of claims, of course. And then we have a series of third parties that are involved in the agreement and that can be mentioned, of course, in the contract, in the policy. Uh, in case of a fine art insurance policy, can be the specialized transporters, museums, employees, and all these kind of uh, stakeholders. Uh, let's do an example, a practical example. In the case of an art exhibition, that is uh, one of the most, let's say, complicated examples in this field. We have a company who's uh, organizing the exhibition, so the exhibition organizer. And uh, this one is, of, is always the contractor, the one who is paying the premium for the insurance. Mm -hmm. Then we have the insured, often is the museum itself, uh, is the one whose interest is protected by the insurance. Then we have the beneficiary. The beneficiary can be both the museum, in case it's the owner of the artworks, or in case of claim, you can imagine that uh, in the museum there are, yes, of course, uh, uh, artworks uh, uh, of the museum, but also there can be exposed artworks of private collectors who are lending the artworks just for the exhibition. And in case of claims, of course, the beneficiary uh, won't be the museum, but the private art collector. In the insurance industry, we have two main typologies of policy, two different approaches, all risk approach and name Paris approach. The name Paris approach, uh, we can define it as a standard approach. Uh, we can think about uh, uh, no insurance policy, so a policy covering uh, an apartment. And this policy will on only cover the risks that are expressly named in the policy, for instance, fire and theft. The risk approach instead, which is the approach that is often used in the fine art industry, is completely different. And this is a huge benefit for our clients, for our art collectors or museum. Why? Because this policy is covering any kind of risk except what is expressly mentioned in the exclusion chapter of the policy. Another great benefit of this kind of policy uh, is the fact that it's present the reverse of the burden of proof. What does it mean? It means that in case of claim, it's the insurer who has to demonstrate that the risk coverage has not been provided by the policy by looking in the exclusion uh, chapter. This is uh, the opposite instead in the name pairs more standard approach in which is the client who has to demonstrate in case of claims that the policy was covering 
was covering uh, the, the particular risk. Of course, uh, in the O risk section, uh, we need to we need to pay particular attention to the exclusion uh, clauses, and we will uh, we will cover it uh, in the next slide. So, as you said before, the financial insurance policy it's uh, often an O risk policy. So, in this case, it's really important to understand what is excluded uh, in this policy. So, what is not covered. There are always excluded damages caused by variation in temperature, pressure, or humidity that cause damage to the artwork. Uh, damages caused by the state of conservation and the progressive deterioration of the object insured, of course. Uh, damages caused by insect or woodworms. But also uh, damages that are having their direct origin in the restoration operation. So a restoration that is made by unskilled personnel or uh, with unsuitable means and methodologies. So a restoration that is done in an incorrect way is not included in the coverage. Then war, it's always excluded. War, insurrection, confiscation, anything related to war is always excluded. Uh, but also, of course, uh, is excluded the willful misconduct by the insured or the policyholder. What does it mean? It means that if a policyholder or uh, the beneficiary or the insured uh, create on purpose a damage, of course, uh, is not covered by the policy. Uh, then uh, it's always excluded uh, explosion, any kind of explosion. This is often related to, to war and the mysterious disappearance of an artwork. Okay, now we can start to analyze how a uh, fine art insurance policy is structured. We have different conditions, general condition and special condition. These two main sections are, are rules that we need to follow. In the general condition, we will find general rules about the risk. So the definition that we have already seen before, uh, for instance, who is the beneficiary, who is the uh, contractor and so on and so forth. Then we have um, information about the object of the insurance, the premium payment, uh, the exclusion, really important section that we have just analyzed, and then the obligation in case of a claim, what I need to do in case of claim. Then we have the special conditions. Special conditions are uh, really specific to the risk that we are analyzing uh, and are divided in two main sections. So the inventory section and the transportation section. In the inventory section, we will have information about risk location. Uh, for instance, I can have a collection that is spread around three different apartments, two at the city and one at the seaside. I will have three different risk, lo risk location uh, and I will have three different facility reports uh, with the, all the information about uh, uh, the risk, the environmental risk, uh, the security and safety uh, measures uh, for each location. Then I have information about uh, the insured value, of course, how much uh, do I have in each location. Um, then I have information about uh, uh, the condition of the construction, of course, in the, the different location. And a list, the list of objects, the list of objects that uh, are part of my insurance coverage. In the transportation section, instead, I have specific rules about movimentation, about transport, uh, because I have to, to separate uh, two different risks. Uh, the stay risk, when the artwork is uh, in, at the wall in your apartment, but when I'm moving the artwork, I need to follow the rules uh, of the transportation section. Third party coverage extension. Nowadays, art collectors are dynamic art collectors, but also museum are not just uh, uh, keeping the, the same artwork in the same room. Uh, the life of an artwork nowadays can be really frenetic. Uh, it's not just stay risk uh, in the same room of an apartment or in a museum, but artworks are moving, are moving around between different locations. They can be restoration laboratories, uh, they can be other museums, other shows to be exhibited in other places. Uh, they can be part of events, conferences, concerts, dinner, all of these cases are um, exposing the artwork to an additional risk. So if one of these cases, uh, in one of these cases, the client, the customer, the owner of the artwork uh, or the museum need to communicate this to the insurance company uh, that will provide a specific premium uh, based on the additional risk to which the insurance company will be exposed due to one of these events. 
Another really important aspect of a finality insurance policy uh, is related to the insured value. The insured value of a policy uh, can be of two types, agreed value and declared value. And the agreed value of what is insured is the commercial value attributed to the object, so to the artworks in our case, at the time of signing the policy, so at the beginning. And it's established by a mutual agreement between the parties, so between uh, the, the client, the art collectors for the museum and the insurance company. The declared value, instead, is what is declared by the client and is not agreed at the beginning with the insurance company. So, in case of claim, let's see what happened in these two uh, different cases. Uh, in case of claim, in case of total loss of an artworks, for instance, if we have a policy in agreed value, the client is uh, sure that we receive uh, the sum insured uh, and agreed at the beginning. In case of declared value, instead, the, the insurance company will go and check the value of the artworks in that specific moment. So the client uh, doesn't know the exact amount that he will receive in case of total loss. Uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's better, it's safer for the client uh, to, to, to be insured in agreed value. Uh, in this box, we, we can see another important aspect related to the claims. So we always need to remind that the insurance, uh, the insurance cover, uh, it's covering the, the economic value of the object. The therefore, in uh, an event of damage, in addition to the, the cost of restoration, the policy will compensate also any depreciation to the commercial value of the object. What does it mean? I have uh, an artwork. Let's say uh, that I have a fontana. Uh, I have a damage to this fontana. Uh, the canva, it's, uh, I have a bit, little cut uh, in, in the canva. Uh, this, this damage, of course, will be, will be restored and the insurance company will pay for this restoration. But let's suppose that uh, the client wants to sell uh, these artworks in three years' time. Uh, when they will sell these artworks, they, they, will, uh, they are obliged to uh, write information about the artworks, so they, they, will, uh, they will need to write that three years ago there was a restoration. And this restoration may cause a decrease in the commercial value of these artworks. So that decrease, the depreciation, uh, is covered by the insurance company that we will pay uh, to, to the client in case of claim. Documents that support the risk assessment. So, so far we have been talking about both private and institutional customers. So art collectors on one side and museums uh, on the other side. In both cases, we need to do a risk assessment. So assessing the risk, the collection, where is it, which are the, the main risk to which the, the collection is exposed. But in case of institutional clients, so museums, we need to have uh, higher degrees of information uh, about the risk. Because you can imagine in a museum there are uh, a very high, that there is a very high concentration of some insured, a higher value insured. So it's important to, to really go deep in the risk assessment. A crucial uh, document in this phase is the facility report of a museum. Uh, it's very important and it's fundamental uh, to, to stipulate the art insurance policy. So the insurance company is always asking to the museum uh, to have a facility report before underwriting the risk. What is it? The facility report is a technical document which is the safety and security measure of the exhibition space or the museum hosting the collection and the exhibition. Uh, it includes many different kinds of information, information about the, the type of setup, so where the exhibition is exposed, uh, which building, uh, which artwork are in uh, which space. It's really important to understand. And uh, any museum, it's different. Then uh, it has also information about surveillance system, uh, so security, active or passive means of protection, and the condition of the building. You can imagine that a collection that is hosted in a, a new building, in a new museum, uh, it's, uh, it's exposed to a different risk to another collection uh, instead uh, in a, that is hosted in an old building, in a, an historical building in the center of Italy uh, that is mostly 
in most cases, it's a building that was not born uh, to host that collection and it was uh, not born to be a museum. It has been converted into a museum. Uh, so it's really important to, to understand uh, to understand this uh, and go really in depth uh, thanks to a document uh, like the, the facility report. A potential issue related to facility report is related to the fact that it is not a unique standard to be followed. There are several guidelines, but there is no unique standard for a facility report of a museum. So in Europe, we have the European Museum Standard for Facility Report. Uh, it's really important. It's, uh, it's a very good uh, uh, guideline to be followed. Uh, and it's, uh, it's taken from the United Kingdom Registers Group Standard. Uh, the UK in general uh, have the highest standard in when we think about uh, facility report and guidelines related to museum, especially. So following the, the most popular guidelines uh, in Europe for the facility report of a museum, uh, we can describe how it is structured. So it has the first section that is dedicated to general infos uh, about the museum itself. Uh, then a section dedicated to the building, so which kind of building it is. Then security and safety system, then information about the organization, and uh, last but very important information about the exhibition so how the artworks are exhibited inside the museum the main areas as we said uh, they start with the general information about the museum uh, so we will find always uh, uh, the history of the museum and its mission uh, then we have uh, contact uh, of course in case of emergency uh, it's really important uh, to have the contact uh, of the people in charge to, to manage the emergency and uh, the main events that they are organizing. Exhibition, yes, how often, which kind of exhibition, in which space. Then information about the building. Of course, it's really important uh, to understand where is it located, the building. Natural hazard. With natural hazard, uh, we, we mean the environmental risk to which the museum is exposed in the location. Uh, so we can think about uh, earthquakes. In Italy, it's really important to understand if the museum is uh, located in a position in which earthquakes uh, may be a problem, uh, but also floods. Uh, so this is really important to be understood from the insurance company perspective. And then the construction, so which kind of construction it is. Uh, it is made of uh, concrete, it is made of wood, uh, so fire can be a problem for the collection. Uh, it has just uh, one floor, it's multiple floors, so in case of flood, uh, the, the floor zero, of course, uh, is really exposed. Uh, the floor five is not exposed. Uh, so you, you start to assess the risk and understand uh, which kind of artworks uh, uh, it's at risk uh, related to which risk fire, theft, floods, earthquakes. Uh, it's, it's very important uh, to understand uh, uh, this section and to have uh, truthful and detailed information in this section. Then, of course, security and safety system. Uh, it's important to understand also this part. So Fire alarm, fire alarm system, uh, which system they have. Uh, it's a new museum, so they have a high standard of fire alarm system. Uh, Anti-intrusion, of course, uh, during the night, how the museum is managed, who has the key, who is in charge to, to close the museum, uh, what is the anti-intrusion system they have. And then climate control, of course, it's, uh, it's really important uh, uh, for the artworks, for the life of an artworks, uh, to have a climate that is uh, stable uh, and, the, and that is the, the right one uh, for the kind of material, uh, for the particular material uh, of the artworks. Then the, the organization. It's important also to understand how a museum is organized. 
So how the stuff is uh, structured, who are the person in charge uh, to manage the, the, the collection, uh, who are the person in charge to manage the collector, the collection in case of an emergency. And uh, it's really important for museum to already have an emergency plan. So the emergency uh, does not have to be, uh, you know, managed uh, with the improvisation. It has to be uh, prepared. Uh, we need to, to know how to react in case of emergency. So it's really important to have a, a plan and to be trained. So the personnel in the organization has to be trained and ready to react in a, in a fast way in case of emergency to, to save uh, as much as possible uh, the collection and the artworks. Then exhibition, uh, the main areas of the, of the exhibition. So which are the procedures to, to set up an exhibition? Uh, who are uh, the, the, the transporter, the specialized transporter? Who are the, the art lenders, uh, handlers? So, of course, uh, uh, it has to be per trained personnel uh, which are managing the artworks during transportation, during movimentation. Uh, then the exhibition areas, which are the areas of the museum that are dedicated to the exhibition and how they are organized. All this information are really important uh, to be transmitted to the insurance company. Uh, and it's, uh, it's it's fundamental to to assess the risk and to do uh, the the right pricing to the policy and the link and transit of course uh, it's, the, it's the last point but it's it's very important because it's the moment in which the artwork are exposed to the the highest risk so the majority the vast majority of claims uh, happens in this point when uh, we have people handling artworks and when we, we have people moving the artworks. So it's, uh, it's crucial, it's a crucial point uh, and it has to be made just by very specialized personnel or uh, people who are moving artworks. It's very important to prepare a list of objects of the collection before an emergency and uh, it should be a priority of the cultural institutions. So uh, if we, we uh, should find ourselves in this situation of an emergency, we will already be prepared to intervene by knowing which objects have uh, an higher priority and have to be saved. It would be ideal to prepare a list of objects with the higher priority according to the different emergency scenarios, like the fire, flood, but it's very difficult and subject to decide which objects have higher priority than others, but we can follow some several factors, such as the, the collective importance of the object or the ease of handling or, per, for example, the economic value. How can we uh, establish the value of uh, uh, work of art? Uh, in general, in order to define the value of uh, an artwork, it is necessary to uh, carry out an effective and efficient due diligence uh, so we have to define, for example, the authenticity of the hard work, the state of preservation, understanding how much it is uh, original. Uh, some subjects are more like uh, more likely and therefore acquire more value for the audience, and uh, there is also a symbolic value. Uh, that has the hard work for a community or a society. And all these variables uh, mean that the value is different and may even vary depending on the market uh, or the time, for example. Uh, values uh, are therefore influenced by uh, factors that uh, directly uh, impact the artwork uh, in establishing its uh, value, uh, for example those who we have just mentioned, and there are, there are also other uh, factors like uh, as uh, endogenous factors that can externally influence uh, 
the value. Uh, for example, the importance of a curator of an exhibition or the fact that this uh, artwork was exhibited at the Biennale of Venice. And so the variables are really, really vary and can change in the time. The condition report is an extremely important document for the artwork and also from the insurance point of view. So, uh, it is an odd document that demonstrates the state of conservation of an artwork and in the insurance field it is uh, compulsory and the restorers and registered conservators has to uh, fill it in before and after uh, each handling. It is linked to the transport because there is an effective transfer of liability from the transporters to the, for example, exhibition organizer or lenders. In the event of claims, um, the condition report is necessary to um, assess the, the image and establish the liability of the subjects.